I'm Mark from Datagate here at IT Expo and I'm here with Mr. IT Expo himself, Rich Tarani. Rich, thank you for spending time. How are you, Mark? I'm very good, thank you. It's, it's uh, great to be here. And uh, Rich, I've got a few questions that I've, I've always wanted to ask uh, you know, about this great show that you run. So, so when, did, when did you start it? How did it all get, get going in the early days? Uh, it started in 1999 in uh, the Hotel Del Coronado in San Diego, and uh, we launched it back then. Uh, it was called Internet Telephony Conference and Expo, and we saw the convergence of voice over IP networks, voice data, video over IP networks. And that was that was the birth of it, and this is now the 39th show, believe it or not. 39, so it's 39, 39 years of, uh, of IT Expo? Well, that? we did it. We did it on two coasts for a while, so yeah. there's some doubling. Right now it's just in South Florida, so, but if you add them all up, it's 39. Wow, that's, that's awesome. And, and so in terms of attendees, I mean, how many attendees did you have at the first shows compared to what you're getting here now? Uh, if memory serves, we were in the 1500 range or something like that, or maybe less. We had 60 exhibitors at the first show at the Hotel Del Coronado. They actually were doing construction. We had to be in a tent outside. Uh, we had 60 exhibitors, yeah, about a about, uh, thousand people or thereabouts. And now we are at 300 exhibitors and 7,500 people. Wow, yeah, that's, that's a real credit. You've really, really built up a great, a great uh, show here. And, uh, and so how have you found like going through the COVID period? I mean, how's that been for you and your business? Um, I'd say it's, it's, you know, other than being a restaurant, I, I just can't imagine a more challenging environment. And, and I've seen a lot. I mean, there was a telecom crash in 80, I'm sorry, in 2001 to 2004, which was, which was terrible. Then there was uh, 2008, which was a challenge as well uh, with the financial crisis. It wasn't that bad relatively. Uh, but, you know, when you can't have a show because people are afraid of catching a disease, uh, it makes it challenging. Now, having said that, we did have a show in 2020 that was very well attended, and it was just before COVID hit. Uh, that was February 14th it ended, and then 2021, we ended up having a show as well, which uh, was a lot smaller because large companies didn't have budgets. Uh, no masks, we were here in South Florida, no one got COVID that we know of, and the Delta variant actually became a concern right after the show was over. We all got alerts on our phone, one o'clock on a Friday, so we, we kind of snuck in another show, but it was a lot smaller. Mm. And then now we're back to, you know, we, I think we've regained our momentum and, even, and then some, and, and there's a real thirst and a hunger in this market, because you know, Mark, mm. we've been talking about working from home and the tools and technology since this show started back in the 90s. And, you know, there are a lot of people who would tell us that that'll never happen and, you know, I don't even, it, you can't run a company remotely and people can't work from home. And so obviously we know that um, the, the challenges this industry faced were more, I don't know if they were just resistance, hesitancy, human nature, as opposed to technological issues. But we saw with the pandemic that all of that went away and not, not that every com company can work effectively at home, but many can and many are actually more productive working remotely. And so, yeah. so we were, I think we were right from a technological standpoint and it took a while for the culture, it took a pandemic for the culture to realize that all of these vendors here that are helping uh, employees be more productive have so much more to offer and not just to some companies, but to every company because every company now has to they have to address the concept of at least hybrid and possibly remote work. Yes. Uh, I was in a keynote room the other day, it was hundreds of people, I asked them how many people work from home at least part-time, their company, and 50% of the, the hands went up. Then I said, how many people work from home up to, up to the whole week, and 50% of the hands went up. So it's, it's unbelievable that at least half the people at this company, their companies have change the way they they do business and, and you know we I believe that this is a, a permanent change. More people will come back to the office, yes, yeah. but it's a permanent change in the flexibility and thankfully people like you and your company, Datagate and others, they provide the tools yeah. that that allow this this new way of working. Absolutely and I think uh, the, I guess the point you're making there too is that uh, shows like IT Expo are more important than ever now. You know, this is how we meet people, and uh, and and are you, are you, do you think that's giving you know part of the reason for this this big boost that we're seeing here in, in the att attendance today? Yeah. 
Yeah, there's been a there's been a dearth of events for for two years, and there's been unbelievable change, and there's been unbelievable acceptance in the technology uh, that, that's here. And more importantly, I mean, if you look at it, I I, I call the technology at this show life saving. If it, mm. what would we have done in a pandemic? without technology? How would we have ordered all of our food? How would we have been able to, to keep hundreds of millions of people employed if we didn't have this technology and, and related technology, e-commerce and some of the other related technologies? Yeah. What would we have done as a global society? What kind of chaos would we have had? What kind of death yeah. and destruction would we, and potential revolution in countries when yeah. people don't have money, don't have food, can't leave the house? I mean, thank God technology is where it is today. Broadband yeah. is where it is today. This pandemic had happened in 1985. I think we would have all been limited in the U.S. to eating Domino's because I think that was the only place we could order from then. Yeah. And it's only so long you're going to eat Domino's and, yeah. and, and eventually rather not eat anything. Yeah. So uh, no offense to Domino's. Uh, so the point is that, yeah, technology has really proven to be a life-saving yeah. and now it's going to be business saving and productivity enhancing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yep. Thank God for technology, and uh, and obviously this is this is where uh, where it all comes together, and we all get to, to see what's out there. Uh, so, what would be your advice to uh, people attending uh, IT Expo, MSPs? Uh, how do you get the most out of the IT Expo show? You need to do. Um, there's a one third rule. You know, my father started this company 50 years ago, and he used to talk about the one third rule. And it's it's so. I mean, it's so applicable even today. One third of the education is in the exhibit hall. One third is in the conferences, and one third of it is networking. Uh, I think this year the networking is more important than ever because we haven't had effective networking. And for all the online events that that we've all participated in. The, the networking doesn't exist the way it does in person. It just doesn't. Overhearing conversations, chatting with someone over a beer, like last night at our networking reception, where, where you know it's a packed place where we're all relaxed and enjoying the outdoor setting and talking business at the same time. Yeah. It, it that didn't happen. So I'd say networking is a little bit more, uh, and probably will remain so for maybe six months to a year at least. Uh, there are so many new companies out there. Cloud has enabled so many companies to launch. Remote working has allowed so many new companies to launch. MSPs have infinite solutions to choose from to offer their customers and really you have got to be in the conversation with your customer about all the new things happening because if you're not, another MSP will be and you're going to lose that customer. So you need to stay up on cybersecurity, you need to stay up on VoIP and billing and UCAS and you need to know everything that's going on. And it's a daunting challenge, but shows like this make it easier. And in three, four days, you can literally get a pulse of everything happening in the market. Absolutely, fully agree, that's, that, that's great. And so, so Rich, uh, moving on to the next IT Expo, is there anything you can tell us about, about that at this stage? Is it... Yeah, we're going to go back to February. I don't, I don't remember the exact dates. I know it's mid-February or so, but we this show used to be a February event until COVID, and we had to do back-to-back -back June events. But we're going to go back to uh, the February timeframe, which means there's going to be an added incentive for people from uh, places like where you are, Canada. Yeah. We used to get a lot of Canadians, we probably still do, but we'll get even more yeah. when, when our show's in February, uh, North America, Europe, uh, we'll get even more people. I mean, this was a packed event, but I yeah. expect in February it's going to do even better. So that's one of the changes. The other change is going to be, we'll be at the uh, beginning of the budget cycle, which is always important for my exhibitors. I want them to be able to get maximum ROI and, and the beginning of the budget cycle is a good time, February first quarter. Um, I think those are the two biggest changes. Uh, other than that, we're always we're always uh, trying to evolve the show to stay ahead of where things are so MSPs can come learn about the future. And even the IT companies that come here as well as you know just traditional enterprises that come here, SMBs and carriers, we try to let them see what's next because they need to be on the leading edge to stay ahead in their business. Absolutely. Well, Rich, thank you. I really, really appreciate your, your time here today. It's great to talk to uh, the guy that make, makes it all happen here at IT Expo. Uh, the next one sounds fantastic. We'll definitely be here. This one's been fantastic. Uh, so thank you, Rich. Uh, so uh, very much an honor and a privilege to be, uh, to be here interviewing uh, Rich Shirani uh, at the uh, IT Expo in Fort Lauderdale. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Great job.